As usual, uh, kindly share with someone that we are live and uh, do share with us where you are joining us from. Kindly share with someone that we are live and uh, do share with us where you are joining us from. And some of you do indicate if you can hear me properly. Do indicate if you can hear me properly. A very good evening to you, beloveds. Let us kindly log in to come and hear the word of the Lord um, that he has for us in this day. So I'm going to give you some time as I get my word ready to share with someone to be in the spirit, praying by the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit that your heart may be tender and receptive to the word that the Lord has in store for us in this day. So do indicate if you can hear me properly. I see one person saying, I can hear you. So I'm going to assume, yes, majority of you can hear me. So I don't have to reduce my instrumental because uh, I'm kind of in sync with the music that is playing in the background so I'm very glad that majority of you can hear me properly wonderful so as we are sharing that we are audible let's also be sharing with our loved ones that they may come and hear the word of the Lord for themselves very interesting times that we're in you want to know what God is saying in fact, you want to confirm what God is already saying to you because I'm assuming that you are building your relationship with God via Holy Spirit. You are edifying yourself in the Spirit. You are edifying yourself in the Word of God and allowing yourself to be immersed in the presence of the Lord that you may know and understand the times and the seasons that we find ourselves in so do share with someone that we are live that we may compare notes in terms of what the lord is saying to us as the body of christ god may not say the same parts of a puzzle to every single one of us god will show us parts bits and pieces of the same thing so when we come together we are merely coming together to put the pieces of the puzzle together so do log in, share with a friend, share with a loved one that we are alive or anybody that God may be putting in your heart. It doesn't have to be family. It doesn't have to be your friend. Sometimes God can even instruct you to share with your enemies that they may come into the knowledge of who he is and be able to turn from their wicked ways. So I'm going to give you two more minutes to log in. And then we're going to go into the word. Um, there seem to have been a mixed uh, a mix up 
uh, I think we are all, all aware of the fact that um, our Seven Mountain series, we have it on Mondays. And on Fridays, I think I've made this one clear that on Fridays, I'm going to be giving you a prophetic update. When we talk about prophetic update, I'm simply sharing with you the heart of God as per that which he has shared with me during my prayer time uh, in that particular season or in that particular week. For those of you that uh, are familiar with my relationship with the Lord, and I believe it's a relationship and the type of relationship that is going to become uh, more or less common within the body of Christ in this season because it's the kind of relationship where the knowledge of who he is uh, floods your being or the inner man uh, becomes more evident in your life and he more or less takes over from the carnal man and when that happens you pretty much have a relationship with the Lord where you talk it's a relationship it's intimate you have conversations it's not a situation where he says one thing or one statement once in a while but it's a relationship and there's nothing better than that because you get to know the heart of God every step of your journey and that is something that I pray for every single one of you to have God doesn't have to talk to you about the things that he talks to me about. The same way that you know you have a relationship with different people and uh, nonetheless all those relationships may be precious but the way you relate with every single one of those people is different based on the kind of relationship or the kind of uh, approach towards your relationship that is required according to whatever function that each of you has been given towards one another because whatever function you have determines the kind of relationship you have with an individual the relationship with you have with your husband is different from the relationship you have with your children similarly the relationship you have with your family is different from the relationship you have with your boss or your colleagues so it differs from person to person but nonetheless god desires to have an intimate relationship with every single one of his children that he may relate to you his plans for your life that he may help you on how to realize those plans how to live a purposeful life how to live according to the assignment that has been given to you how to live according to the life that has been written of you by the father of glory so that is the kind of time that we are in in this season. We're in a time where the knowledge of God is flooding the earth. It's not about to flood the earth, but it has started to flood the earth. And as the knowledge of God starts to flood the earth, you are one of the people that he wants to use. You are one of those vessels that he wants to fill. Because this feeling... You need vessels to fill. You can't fill something that doesn't have space or something that doesn't have capacity. So how do we build capacity? We build capacity by spending time in the presence of the Lord, by making time for Him, by having an intentional relationship with Holy Spirit. That is how we make time for Him. And that is how, consequently, we get to attain this knowledge that we need. And God doesn't give you random knowledge because God is not a waster. He doesn't come to you like you, you and your friend would do to just talk about other people or to just gossip. When God visits you, when God starts to talk to you, he talks to you or he speaks to you about your destiny. He talks to you about how to come into the fullness of who you are, how to be able to attain or how to be able to achieve the assignment, the goals that he has given you to achieve, the assignment that is upon your life. He comes to give you instructions. He comes to assure you of your true identity so that when the enemy comes to try and make you question who you are by the circumstances that come and go god has already given you a firm foundation in your spirit man of who you are 
and you are not shaken by any storm and you are not shaken by any season in your life why because you are a man and a woman of knowledge knowledge we're in a time and a season where the war is not going to be the way that we think we're not in a time where the war that we're facing is going to be that of bloodshed god has already given us assurance that he's going to stop the enemy at his tracks and there are some things that i cannot discuss with you now it's absolutely mind-blowing just you know every time i think there's no way god is going to give me more understanding of the era that we've entered and his plans that are going to override the plans of the enemy he, he never ceases to amaze me and the word that he's given me for the meeting that we're going to have in Haboron is absolute it puts things into perspective and he made me understand there was a season where i was giving you the prophetic understanding of the problem the prophetic understanding of what has been planned by the enemy and what the great reset is all about and what satan is hoping to achieve by the great reset and what uh, is happening across borders politically economically and socially what is happening and how the enemy intends to bring to pass his plans for this new era that we have entered and god had only given me an understanding a general understanding of his plans but nothing specific nothing really concrete to go by and now that we've entered a season of running with the vision he's now giving an understanding a full understanding of what and what is really happening one two the strategies the ability for us to be able to distinguish between the destruction of the enemy that is supposed to uh, to appear to us like the reality of what is happening and then the true reality of what is truly happening and how we can come against these plans of the enemy so that we are not taken by surprise by anything that satan has in store or he has planned against humanity in this time so those of you that are in Haburun and the surrounding areas that feel led you know that you know that you know that you know that you are a soldier even if you're not around Haburun and the lord is leading you to come for this meeting i urge you to come god in this season is birthing the lion in you you are going to be amazed at the level of courage you have that has been dormant in the inside of you it is already in the inside of you when god made you he knew what you were going to become he knew what he was wiring you for when he was the same way that any manufacturer when you make something you have in the first thing that you have in mind before you think about its appearance how it's going to be attractive on the outside the first thing that you think of is the function of whatever it is that you are constructing so similarly god before he made us he had an understanding of our function he was the, the first thing that he was thinking about was not your hair was not your complexion was not your figure was not uh your height but he was thinking about the function of this machine that he was making, the human machine. He calls it a machine. So if you want to know where machines originated from, look to Jesus. And you will understand the realm of call. Not these fake things that we are seeing in the form of robots that are meant to intimidate you in this hour because you fail to know and understand who you are and you are failing to come to the forefront and allow holy spirit to unleash you to unleash the real you but in this season god is saying i am looking for my 300 i am looking for the 300 of this hour i'm looking for those that i can impart with my boldness with my raw 
with my authority, with my power, with my wisdom, that they may go forth unhindered with no fear whatsoever, but with power, with love, and with a sound mind. When you have these three, the enemy has nothing on you. When you have these three, when boogeyman comes out to play, you make him understand, I'm not a child. I'm not going to fall for your gimmicks. I'm not going to fall for these things. I'm not going to run away from my inheritance simply because you are trying to scare me off. I know who I am and I know your place. And your place is under my feet. Because the Bible tells me very clearly that I am the head and not the tail. And I'm not about to be confused. I have read and I know your tactics. From the very beginning when you deceived my forefathers. I know your tactics. You like to come and you like to question the word of the Lord. And try to get me to question his word. To say, did God really say? Did he really say? So when you understand that the word of God is true. The word of God will never be challenged, never, never be challenged. No matter what it may look like in the beginning, it will never be challenged. If God said, I am for you, God is for you. God, if God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, God will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter what it may look like in the physical at the time. In the end, the word of the Lord will prove itself to be sure. So we're in that time yet again where God is... Because it's always an army that ushers the people or a nation of refreshing. I'll say that again. It is always an army that ushers the nation or a nation into a time of rest. A time of blessedness. A time of freedom from oppression. And there's always a set time. So majority of you, at first, when God showed you these things years ago, you tried to go for it. And the enemy knew it was not yet time. Because it was time to be prepared. It was time to go through uh, preparation and God to give you uh, the fullness of the plan. An outline of the plan of how he's going to free you and the people so the enemy was in the business of getting you to be what to be worn out and everything that he could do within this this time where he knew it's not yet time because when it's time no one can stop it the enemy cannot stop it you cannot stop it so he takes advantage of that and he knows that you don't know that so majority of you that had backslidden, majority of you that had left the faith, is because you were tired. And the enemy was telling you, these things are never going to happen. It's never going to happen. The enemy will always win. Isn't it not there in the Bible, in Malachi, where the people were discussing amongst themselves, what got them to that conclusion? They were tired of fighting, but they fought at the wrong time. But nonetheless, it had to happen. For them to know later on that when God, when it's time, no matter how tired you are, God will quicken you with his own power and his own strength. Sarah was old. She was old, naturally. She was over the whole thing of pleasure with your husband and all of these things. She was old. She didn't have the strength for it. Abraham barely had the strength for it. And you can even imagine at that age carrying a child. Those of you that have been pregnant before, you know, even in your early years, that once you hit seven months, eight months, nine months, you, all you want is for this human being that is inside of you to just come out. Some of you even suffer back aches and all sorts of things. You, you, hardly, you are hardly able to breathe. So imagine going through that at that age. 
So what was happening? The grace, the strength of God, the strength from on high was upon the old woman. And she was able to do what was impossible in the natural realm. Or what was impossible the natural way. So a lot of things that God is promising to do for us in this season, it looks impossible. It looks impossible. Some of you, there are some things that God is bringing to you. He's talking to you about. It's things that he has spoken to you about in, before, years ago. And you've long forgotten about those things. You've ruled them out. God is knocking with those things again. And some of you cannot even hear him yet. Some of you, he's bringing them to your remembrance now. He's pulling those files now. And you are laughing. You are saying, no way. Why? Because in the physical, it doesn't look like something that can happen. It doesn't look like something that can transpire at this point in time. Because everything that could possibly militate against it has done exactly that. God says, perfect ground for me to move as God. When the 300 and Gideon went to fight hundreds of thousands of the Philistines army, they had to entirely depend on God's strategy to win the fight. Entirely. Because practically speaking or naturally speaking, they stood no chance. They stood no chance. So their courage was not needed for them to use their physical might to win the fight. The courage was needed for them to trust God. Do you know how difficult it is to trust God? There's nothing else that believers struggle with more than trusting God. Trusting God. Because God is never looking for your own strength, your own ability. He is always looking for your trust. Do you trust me? Do you trust that I can do what I said I will do? If you trust me, then you will show me by following every instruction I'm giving you. Because trust without obedience is not trust. When you say you trust God and yet you are failing to obey him, you are simply saying to him, I hear you, I acknowledge what you are saying, but I don't trust it. Therefore, I'm going to do what I trust and what I have faith in. Because trust goes hand in hand with faith. You cannot divorce trust from faith. Without trust, there's no faith. And without faith, there's no trust. So how do we know what we have faith in? We know what we have faith in because of what we do. How do we know what we trust? We know what we trust by our actions. Your actions will let you know what you trust. You can't say you trust your husband and then you go and look into his phone to check if there's anyone that he's talking to. That is not trust. You are saying, I don't trust you. I'm here, but I don't trust you. So because I don't trust you, I have to check for myself whether what you are saying to me is true or not. And the enemy will tell you, who in, are you crazy? Who in their right mind does not check to know and understand what is happening in their own household so that they can put things in order? He's not looking to put things in order. He's looking to separate you. He's looking to bring about friction in your relationship. It's not trust. Trust looks a little bit different than what we think or what we've been made to believe. That is trust. Trust says, I, I don't know how you're going to do it. Even though right about now, it doesn't look the right way. It doesn't look like what you said and what you are doing is the same thing. I still choose to trust you. Trust can make you look foolish, beloved. Trust oftentimes will make you look foolish. Because majority of the time, what you are trusting and what you've been told in the physical, the enemy will militate against it to give you a different picture. So that you follow that picture and you don't follow what you have been told by God. 
if there was nothing to militate against the spoken word, there would be no reason or no need for trust. Just think about it. For someone to say, trust me, it means they've already made room, allowance, that there may be some things that are not going to look like or that are contrary to what I'm saying to you. But trust me. Trust in the integrity of my word. That in the end, that which I've said to you is exactly what you are going to see. Trust me. We see Jesus Christ say, I'm just going to read it for you because I don't want to just give you my word. I want you to hear the words of the master himself in John 14 chapter 1. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You, you believe in God, believe also in me. Then he says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way, and the way you know. So as much as the disciples were following him, they didn't, as much as he would tell them what would happen and he would tell them what was to transpire and how he's going to go and then there'll be a time where he will come back and all of these things, they didn't get it. And he was okay with the fact that they didn't get it. The only thing that God is not okay with is your lack of trust. The other day he said to me, he said, you will never understand the fullness of my plan even if you tried. Because my ways are too wonderful for you to understand. And I didn't argue with him. I said, yes, Lord, indeed, they are too wonderful for me to understand. Because there's one way we see, we, we have heard and we've been taught that God is. So when we get to experience the real God, we struggle. Because it doesn't match the picture that we've been given of him. But because God is a just God, when you take it upon yourself to personally have that relationship with him, read your Bible by the leading of the Spirit, you will realize that everything you are seeing unfolding in your life, you can find it or you can trace it in the Bible. Everything. There is no experience that any of you is going through right now that cannot be traced in the Bible. None. That is why we have been given the Bible. God didn't just give us pastors. He didn't just give us teachers. He didn't just give us evangelists. He didn't just give us apostles and prophets. God gave us his word to have the final say in our lives. So when we neglect the word, when we decide that we are not going to seek truth for ourselves, because when you read the Bible, he doesn't say prophets seek me, apostles seek me, Teachers, seek me. Evangelists, seek me. Pastors, seek me. He says, seek every believer. He's talking to every believer. He says, seek me. Knock, and it shall be open for you. Seek, and you shall find. So, when we go through whatever the enemy throws at us, God knows there is a template for that particular situation in his word. And if there's any situation in this world that cannot be traced into the Bible, then God would cease to be God. Because it would mean that there's something that is beyond him. There's something that he cannot handle. So if you truly believe and trust him, then you cannot at the same time say, oh, my situation is different and my situation is not catered for by God. I guess I'm one of those special ones or I guess I'm one of the unfortunate ones where I have to go through something that has no answers. No, my dear. It simply means your situation requires deep seeking. You see, when you understand that situations in life, when they come, you have two options of what they can do in your life. A situation can either destroy you because you are failing 
to seek God and to truly understand what is happening. Or you, you had in mind a certain level or a certain amount of seeking that you can do. You have, you have limited yourself in your seeking ability. And when you, you, you came to seek him and you realized that the first two or three times you didn't get an answer, you'd say, ah, you walk away. Then there's someone else who say, I'm not going to walk away. Like the woman who came looking for a deliverance for her daughter. She was called a dog. She was chased by the apostles. They said all sorts of things. Even Jesus Christ himself told her, I didn't come for the dogs. I came for the children. She didn't allow that to get in the way of what she was looking for because she came resolute. She came understanding what she wants and that was deliverance for her daughter. And she was not about to go back without that deliverance. Today, we easily walk away from God. My question to you is, when you walk away, where are you going? Where are you going that is better than his presence? David said, I would rather a king. Can you imagine? A king, a whole king. I am talking about serious kings, not what we see today. A whole king, David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper at the house of my God. A doorkeeper. That is how much he understood the importance of the presence of God in one's life. That no matter what you are going through, no matter the season in your life, you don't walk away from God. The situation is supposed to draw you closer. It's supposed to draw you closer. You are supposed to seek him more and more. That is the kind of stubborn faith that Jesus Christ is looking for when he comes back. He says, well, I find faith. He didn't ask for anything else. He didn't say, well, I find people raising, the, raising their hands and singing Kumbaya. No. He didn't say, well, I find people saying, Lord, Lord, crying on that. Visit. No. When I find them gathered, Singing in one accord. No. Will I find faith? Faith. Because you can still go to church, but you have checked out. You can still pray because you are accustomed to pray, but you have checked out. You no longer believe him for anything he has spoken in your life. Faith. But in this season, like he did for the woman that served Elijah, who had checked out and was not going to seek God anymore for the fruit of the womb. She had checked out. She was tired. She was like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm just going to settle for what I have and just serve God. God was not satisfied with that. You see, sometimes because of sticking around, even when you have checked out, God can have mercy on you. And do what he has purpose to do in your life to revive your faith. The woman's faith was revived by, by God's faithfulness. And God was being faithful also because the woman was found in a place of faithfulness even though her faith had fallen concerning her promises. But she still believed in God enough to discern a servant of God and enough to serve a servant of God without wanting anything in return. And God said, but I'm not that kind of God. Because you live in a world of seed time and harvest time. And whether you, you were putting that seed, knowing it's a seed or not, when you gave him accommodation, that was a seed. That was provoking or bringing to my remembrance your time of performance. So when God acted in the fullness of time for her to receive the fruit of the womb, 
her faith was revived. Many of you in this season, God is getting ready to do something that is going to revive your faith. Whether you believe him or not, the woman did not believe that this thing was going to happen. She was tired. She was saying, Lord, I'm just saving you because I love you. I'm just coming to church because I love you. And I just know that you are God. But I don't want anything else. I don't want to hear anything. I'm fine. The Lord said, you may be fine, but I'm not fine as God. I have a reputation of being faithful to my word. And I'm not going to change that. And I'm not going to, to, to risk being known for something else other than faithfulness. So I'm not even doing this for you. I'm doing it for myself, for the integrity of my word. He said, by this time next year, you'll be holding a baby in your arms. She didn't believe it. She could recognize. Can you believe this? Can, do you even understand that? She was able to discern that this is a servant of God. Nobody told her. She is the one that discerned it. And told her husband, we need to give him accommodation. But in her mind, because it was not even personal. I've, I've already made up my mind. I've already put God in a certain box by reason of my experiences. To say that this is who he is. Isn't that what we do? We come up with our own doctrines of who God is by reason of the failures that we've encountered in our lives. And then we start to come up with doctrines that limit God based on our failures or based on what we think God has failed to do in our lives. Failing to understand that God's timing is not your timing. So because you had put time on it, you yourself decided, I'm going to fast 40 days. After 40 days, God will answer. When he didn't answer after 40 days, you decided, then it means that God doesn't want to do this. But when we go back and trace what happened, did God tell you that after you fast for 40 days, I'm going to perform this thing? That was you. You came up with the 40 days. You decided what the 40 days mean. And then when God doesn't come to do what you have decided, because God is not into the business of proving himself to us. He's God, after all. He doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. So he doesn't get under pressure that, oh my God, she's fasting. What am I going to do? How, how do I move things around so that I bring this thing to pass now? Because she's expecting it and I don't want to look like I can't perform. And this one should go to ministers as well. If God is not under pressure to perform, why are ministers under pressure to perform? I'll say that again. If God is not under pressure to prove anything to anyone, why do we feel the need to feel under pressure to do and to perform when we are not even God? When the one that can perform at any given time is not under any pressure to perform. In this season, we are going to know that God is God. And God is operating his way and God is bringing things to pass his way, his own time. The one thing I will tell you is that what God has purpose to do, he's going to do it. He's going to do it and no one and nothing can stop him. But what will not happen is God will not be put under pressure to perform at your timing. God is going to stick to the time that he has ordained for the performance in your life. In case you know, it's like how you bat a sing with Siri Rachel. Say you have a question, say na ko aso na orusi Rachel. In case you bat a kota meet ni wa kaburoni, kahor o solo hela kahor. Say we na o se bata. Mudi mo asi Rachel. Kore ki bat a kuto wa se tarur. We are not looking to fill up the place. 
Glory to God if people come because they want his word. But we're not looking to fill up the place with empty promises. No. We are not, we are not looking to do that. Ha! 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 And he has a solid plan for your life. He has a solid plan for my life. But no one is going to put him under pressure to do anything that is not for that timing. God is looking for you to align yourself with what he's doing. Because the one thing you need to understand, God is constantly performing something. There is constantly something for you to be doing in your life at every given point. But we miss our assignment on a daily basis. Why? Because there is something that we have set our eyes on. And we say, Lord, if you, if you are there, you will do this thing. And what do you do? You are wasting time. Time that you could be doing the things that are leading to that thing. Because only God knows what is needed for that thing you are crying for? Can you maintain it? You don't even have the knowledge, the know-how. Some of you are fighting and you are crying for marriage. But you, you don't even have any slight idea, any understanding whatsoever what marriage is. What is required of you once you enter that covenant. Some of you, God has promised you positions in high places. And you are just there waiting, wanting that position to come now. The question I have for you is, if you were to attain that position now, are you ready for it? Do you have the understanding of what is required of you on that seat? Do you understand that it is more than a seat? It's a responsibility that is being bestowed upon you. And there are some things that you need to have in your spirit, man, in your head. You need to be imbued with God's power, God's knowledge, God's intelligence, God's understanding pertaining that position. So now the position is not coming because you are not ready. And why are you not ready? You are crying for the position, but you don't understand and you are not prepared for what comes with that position. So, majority of you then find yourselves stuck. Especially those of you who are constantly praying for God's way and for God's will. You, you don't understand. You are seemingly lost and you don't understand. It's, it's mind-blowing for you because you're like, Lord, but I've asked for your will. I'm not even asking for what I want. I want what you want. And this is what you showed me that you want to do in my life. So, why are you not doing it? It's simple. You have to be prepared. You have to be trained. It's like being given a prophecy. I see you being celebrated in, in nations. I see you doing this and this and that. I see you excelling in such, a, in such and such a place. You take it up. And then you sit at home. On now to make a TV game. Over one day, someone will just call you and then you appear at the stadium and then you run. Just because God said so. So it's just going to happen like that. Someone will just call you and then it's, it's, it, they're even calling you during finals. You don't even know how you qualified along the way. You have not been pre preparing in any manner. All you've been doing is just bumming at home. Why? When people ask you, why? No, opportunities have not come yet. As a starting point. To show that you are serious about realizing the spoken word over your life. But Satan has convinced you that just sit at home. This, this thing, because God said it, it will just come to pass. There is no need for training. 
And then he goes to those that are in the world. The same Satan that tells you to, to sit there and do nothing and things will just fall into place. He goes to those in the world that are in the same field as you. He teaches them discipline. He teaches them how to hone that skill and get ready. So for years and years and years, you don't even understand why those that don't even know God are excelling. They're getting promoted left, right, and center. Why? They understand. They may not be in God, but they understand basic principles of life. That success is not by accident. The one thing we need to understand about the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness is that the only difference is who you serve. I'm going to say that again. The only difference between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness is who you serve with your gift. I've given this example before that even those in Hollywood that are serving the devil, they understand I need to keep my faith. If I'm going to, 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 to continue as a model, for example, I have to maintain a certain figure. And for me to maintain a certain figure, it's not just to it's not just going to magically happen. There are some things I need to do. There are some things I need to discipline myself in. I can't just eat anything. I can't just go anywhere because of what I do. So I have to put some restrictions in my life. And I have to discipline myself in certain areas in order for me to succeed in this thing. So if the enemy can manage to convince you to just be a bum and just be home and be lazy and believe that because we, we believe in miracles, oh, it will just miraculously happen. I don't have to do anything. You are, all, you are awfully mistaken. So what he has managed to do is he has managed to remove you as competition for his agents. He has removed you out of the picture. So there's nothing that is militating against what they do in that industry because you have not reported to work. When you don't report for training, it means you have not yet checked in concerning your assignment. So if you're called to be an engineer, for example, and you don't pray to ask God what kind of an engineer are you going to be so that he can steer you in the right direction of what to study concerning engineering so it doesn't stop with the bible the bible is the foundation that gives you direction i'm gonna say that again the bible is the foundation that gives you direction so that you don't pursue the wrong things but nonetheless there's something to pursue beloved there's something to pursue so if you are called to be a doctor God, when you are serious with God and you are going to be a doctor that is working for the kingdom of light, the only difference between you and this other one that also aspires to be a doctor but is working for the kingdom of darkness or they just don't know God so they're just fine with anything and everything. They're fine with abortion. They're fine with whatever. So they're not really helping God and his kingdom with what they've been called to do. So the only difference between the two of you is that because of your knowledge of God, by your supplication and by your reading of the Bible and prayer and staying in his presence and listening to the counsel of Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is then able to help you to maneuver your way in terms of what to feed yourself as knowledge that is supposed to be consumed by a doctor or a medical practitioner. He tells you, instead of reading about or instead of uh, teaching people or only going as far as diagnosing people with diseases and then just referring them to some medicine that you don't even know what it does. You've been told what it does, but you don't know what it does. I want you to go a little bit further. I want you to interrogate the medicine, the, the, the drugs that you give your patients. And I want you to also learn, I've, I've said in my word that the trees that I've availed for you, the fruit is food and the leaves are medicine. 
and then all the leaves are for healing i want you to interrogate this thing and find out how are the leaves for healing and is the current system that is adopted in the medical field in line with that which i have spoken concerning medicine are they sticking to that which i said do they give the people the leaves for healing in that purity or is there something else that is put in there that is meant to bring them how that is your responsibility as a doctor so you see precisely because you are in god you are even more diligent in what you research than the person that is not in god in other words when you are in god you have more work than the people who are in the world but that is not the case is it we know that majority of the people that believe in christ today are the laziest people but it's supposed to be the other way around we are supposed to top the world in terms of our knowledge our understanding of whatever field we've been called to and that requires intensive and intentional study that is led by the holy spirit one of the the things that we have been told about the holy spirit is that he's a teacher he's a helper and he's a teacher he's a teacher do we really think about these things and understand what they mean if he comes to teach that means that there is need for us to be taught that means there is need for us to be educated it's not enough to pray alone prayer is very important don't get me twisted majority of the things that i get to know and majority of the time for me to even know how to channel my studies i first derive that information from a place of prayer so i don't even want us to get it twisted to say that i am downplaying prayer never prayer is my foundation without prayer we are nothing we will fail before we even start but prayer is a starting place when you pray you are provoking the heavens to open you are saying lord i want to have a conversation with you i want to understand what to do holy spirit i'm attuning my divine antenna because i want to hear you properly as you start to teach me my teacher teach me concerning my assignment teach me in what direction i need to study and as we know of physical teachers you know that after a lecture they give you assignment do they not so holy spirit will teach you certain things give you certain revelations make you understand certain things and then after that he gives you homework sometimes he will just give you a word a name and then from that name there will come a whole research that can take you days from that one word that he gave you but because we go into prayer with our own list so how how wait sorry you cannot hear something that you are not looking for it's like when you see a word or you see a term that you've never used before in your life suddenly you will start to see it everywhere it's not that suddenly it's just appearing everywhere no it simply means that now it has been registered in your own consciousness so now because it's registered you can see it the things that you didn't see before is not because they were not there it's simply because you were not looking for them but when you start being aware of something you start to see it so similarly when we go into our time of prayer if you go in with your own list that means you are listening in for specific things i want to to help someone who thinks that they can't hear god god is not trying to make himself difficult to be heard no 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 because he wants every single one of us to be able to do what we've been called to do diligently and excellently and he wants every single one of us to make it so god is not for certain individuals and he's not crafty he's not difficult he's not deep like we're trying to make him 
Because when we believe those things, then automatically some people tend to believe the lie that God can only be heard by certain individuals. No. One of the reasons why people cannot hear God is because they have come into his presence with specific things to hear from him. So you have already attuned yourself to certain things, to certain frequencies that may not even exist in the air at the time and satan will pick your expectations and then he will channel himself and channel his voice because there is no room for what god is saying what god is saying to you is just bouncing off it's bouncing off because you have not accommodated the 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 the, the possibility that god has something to say to you possibly has something to say to you that has nothing to do with what you are expecting from him majority of the time when god speaks i'm always shocked because some of the things he will say they will sound so random they will sound so 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 random that's how i got to really understand by revelation that indeed your thoughts are not our thoughts your ways are so not our ways i've seen this from experience and I continue to see it. And the thing is, you can never, you know, outgrow it to say, oh, I, now, nowadays, because I can hear God and I've been hearing him for years, now I can be, you know, uh, synchronized with God's thoughts all the time. No, 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 no. We can never get to God's level, no matter how much revelation we get. Never. Because for that to happen, then it would mean that his word is not the same yesterday today and forever because if we get to a place where now we have graduated and our thoughts are always god's thoughts and our ways are always god's ways then that means that the word ceases to be true in certain areas and because his word is forever true that means no matter what revelation you got yesterday when you come before him again he's going to blow your mind with another thing to show you that indeed my thoughts and your thoughts will never be the same. But nonetheless, when you come with an open heart, an open mind, you come an empty vessel. I believe he wants to help somebody because he wants you to be able to hear him, to know his ways, to understand how he operates. Because now more than ever before, God wants to align his children with what he's doing in this season. He doesn't want you to miss out on what he's doing in this season. And believe me, majority of you, the instructions you are going to hear are going to be very uncomfortable instructions. So chances are he's been saying them, but you have not been listening. Because it's not what you're looking to hear. What you're looking to hear is your own plans and your own thoughts. So you and God are, are constantly going in separate directions. But God says, I desire to start my performance in your life in this season. Give me that chance. Hallelujah. I'm going to quickly go into the prophetic word. Like I said, there's been a mix-up. Uh, the seven mountains, we're going to cover them on Monday. I want to keep that one consistent. The seven mountains, we're going to cover them on Monday as we have been doing with the past two uh, of that series. And I've said it that uh, Fridays are preserved. We have reserved them for the updating of the prophetic word of the Lord. So I hope that you have heard something concerning the voice of God, concerning relationship with Holy Spirit, that you may be able to come into that space where you can now, you know, align with God and hear what God has uh, in store for you. These are some of the words that the Lord gave on the 20th of September that we never got a chance to share because... They were not in relation with the words that we were giving at the stadium. So they had to be uh, reserved for prophetic update. 
I'm just going to go through that one before I get to the one for October. Are we together so far, beloved? What time is it? Yes, I'm going to try my own means to rush through uh, the word. I'll explain here and there where the Lord allows me or permits me to explain. But I'm just going to go through this word very quickly because it's a lot. And I don't want to take up too much of your evening. Father, I thank you and I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, take over me. Take over every vessel that is under the influence of my voice. Give them understanding and knowledge and revelation of that which you are doing in this time. May this word, even that which seemingly looks like has nothing to do with that situation, may you minister to them through this prophetic word, this prophetic utterance from the heart of the Father to his children. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So on the 20th of September, this is what the Lord said. He said, be strong and courageous. He said, be strong and courageous. Please, when you listen to the word of the Lord, take every single word seriously. Go to the scriptures that talk about that particular word. Meditate on those scriptures. Because when God speaks, when, for example, like he's saying, be strong and courageous. This is a word that he's imparting these two qualities in your spirit, man, as I speak them. So as he's imparting them, they're going in raw. They're going in as seeds. And then when you read the scriptures, I'm giving you a practical way of growing in the Lord. When you take this word where he says, be strong and courageous, and you look for the scriptures that go in line with this word and you meditate on those scriptures what you are doing is that now you are causing the seed to grow into a tree you are causing the manifestation or that word to become active in your life and then you start to see yourself being strong and courageous in the physical realm that is how we bring the word into or the word of god to pass because it's him that is speaking the word that means that it is something that he's doing in your life now but there's a way to unlock it so that you can go through it yourself and see without even anyone saying it that indeed now I feel strong now I have courage to face things that I couldn't face before why? because you listened and then you meditated on the word you see when you when you receive the word from the prophet or you receive the word from servants of god it comes to you audibly but then you have to also couple it with the written word and then when you meditate on the written word it causes the one you had audibly that has now landed and has is now residing in your spirit man to bubble forth and then report to your brain and then report to the fullness of your body to be made realized in your life. So that is the process of the word and how we bring it to pass in our lives. How it becomes active in our lives and we don't die with the potential of the word that we've been accumulating throughout our entire walk with the Lord. So the Lord says be strong and courageous. One of the scriptures that you can go to is the book of Joshua. There's a lot to in that, uh, especially chapter 1, where the Lord was instructing him to be strong and courageous for what he was about to do through him. Hallelujah. And then he goes on to say, Foley, Foley, thy enemies, Foley, Foley, mighty in battle, mighty in battle, mighty in battle, mighty. There's war in the air. There is war in the air. Like I said, the Lord has given me an understanding of the type of war we are facing in this time. So as you report to the barracks, you are going to be given full understanding of the war and the strategy that God has given us in this season on how to win this war. Hallelujah. He goes on to say, raw power unleashed. Raw power unleashed. Pay attention to every word that God is saying. Then he says, my time, my time. And then the Lord said this name. I've said this before. When you hear your name being called out by the Lord, know that he's calling you to himself. 
or if it's someone that you know make them understand that god is saying it is time listen when god calls you don't delay because you don't even know when your time is up and oh thank you holy spirit let me make you understand something when God calls you, let's say, for example, you've been living your life however way you want. You've been clubbing, you've been fornicating, you've been just living like the world recklessly in however way you want it. But for some reason you had been preserved. It's because if your time had not yet come for you to be called, but God knows that he's going to call you to himself. And maybe he has allowed you to be in that space, was trying from a place of being ignorant could later serve your calling at a later time but when it's time when the lord says come out from among them it means that it is time it is not random with the lord so if it is time and then you decide to delay you decide to still be in the world know that you are on your own and know that satan is going to see and he knows every single one of us he knows when it is time so when it is time and you don't come into the hedge that God has in store for you, you don't come under his wings of protection, then my dear friend, you are on your own. It is not going to be business as usual where you live that reckless life and nothing happens. Majority of the time people who died before time is because they were not in the right place. God had been calling them in different ways, but they were refusing to come to him. So when we hear our names, let us respond to the Lord. He's calling you to himself. He said, leave behind childish things and come to me as the living God. He says, Doba. This is D-O-B-A. He says, Doba, Doba, Doba. So I don't know who this person is, but God is calling you to himself. He's saying, now it is time to come forth. So receive him, receive salvation in this time. Because God desires to call you in that you may know the hope of his calling for your life. So if some of you know this person, please relay that message to them and also pray for them. Pray the prayer of salvation with them. Usher them into the kingdom of light. He continues to say, my fire comes, my fire, making history, history in the making. Then he says, Memphis. This apparently is a city in Tennessee. And the Lord said, lynching, pray. There's a word the Lord has given. I forgot the place in the United States of America where the Lord said uh, slavery still exists in that place. So when he said Memphis, he also said lynching. So I don't know what is going to be coming forth in this time, whether it is something that is secretly happening in certain areas there in Memphis and that God is going to be shedding light on, I don't know. But like I've said before, the things that are coming out in this season, we need to pray for our hearts so that we don't get into the trap of offense. We need to pray for our hearts and learn to forgive and know that God who is a just God will serve justice he goes on to say recognize my glory it comes in many new I need to stress this he says recognize my glory it comes in many new forms it comes in many new ways my glory my glory my glory in other words the same way i said don't come into prayer with your list because you will miss the voice of god the same way don't come into a season of revival a season of the glory of the lord with the expectation of him performing according to the glory you have seen of the previous uh encounters or the previous moves of god god is saying in this season discern my move and only holy spirit can help you to discern the move of god it looks different from anything you've ever experienced before so if you are still stuck in your head on what he did through uh his servants or his generals of old then you are going to miss him in this season my friend he says i do a new thing that is needed for the hour that we are in so allow yourself and even pray for yourself and say holy spirit help me it's a very simple prayer help me 
to recognize and to discern the new thing God is doing. Help me to identify the glory of the Lord. Even if it doesn't look like anything I was expecting or it doesn't look like what I'm accustomed to. Help me to be able to recognize the move of God. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. He goes on to say, futile. Futile are the moves of my enemies. Futile. Soon. Soon. The Soon they become weary of unfruitful endeavors. Soon they become weary of unfruitfulness. For unfruitfulness has entered their camp. And then he says, my children receive fruitfulness. You can't have fruitfulness on both camps. Because he's a God of balance. He's a God of balance. Pay attention. Every time when the children of God are going through a hard time, in the enemy's camp, it is, things are just happening. There is fruitfulness like no one's business. But once the Lord declares fruitfulness in his camp, once the Lord declares freedom from captivity, freedom from oppression, once he declares jubilee for his children, then it automatically means it is a dark season. Or a night season for the kingdom of darkness so that is what we're going to be seeing in the season and indeed it has already started hallelujah he goes on to say nations receive my favor and then the Lord said Mabolau I believe this is a, a, a shop in Khabarun I don't know whether it is a local shop or it's a franchise from outside but the Lord mentioned it. I found it very weird because it's not one of those things that I would uh, think at the top of my head. He said, Mabolau, receive my blueprints. Mabolau, receive my blueprints. In this season, I've spoken about brands and I've spoken about companies and I've spoken about a whole lot of things to say that there's nothing that is not going to be judged in this season. Everything is under judgment. Everything. Every single thing. I think even ends. They are under judgment. Everything on the face of the earth is under judgment. So there are some companies, there are some brands that God has weighed and he has seen that overall their business is of integrity and therefore he's giving them favor in this season by giving them blueprints of creative or of creative solutions that are for this hour in whatever field that they're in. And then there are those that he does not approve of that have taken advantage of the blessing of the Lord. And therefore, so for this one, he says, receive my blueprints. That means that the Lord has given it a thumbs up. The Lord continues and he says, Mike's Kitchen. When he said it, I remembered this restaurant when I was, I think I was 10 years old at Kale, at Kale View Mall. I think it was before, I don't know whether... Uh, game city was newly built i'm not sure but i remember this this uh, restaurant at the kale mall kale view mall uh mike's kitchen so when the lord mentioned it, it was so weird for me because i don't even know whether it exists anymore or not uh or whether it has gone down and the lord was to resurrect it i knew i have no idea but the Lord said, Mike's Kitchen, receive. Mike's Kitchen, receive new name. Receive new name. So whoever may be related to the people that owned this restaurant or has any information about this restaurant, you are free to share on the comment section and help us to understand uh, what the Lord is saying and possibly get the message to the right people that need to hear it. And then the Lord continues to say, Ackermans, Ackermans shall be spared. The Lord says, Ackermans shall be spared. We are going to see a lot of companies collapse. Beloved, I don't want to lie to you. I want you to be sober and to understand what is about to take place. Some of the companies that will collapse, some of you work for them. 
but you need to hear these things now so that when it happens you don't start to to wallow in misery and you allow the enemy to discourage you and to make you feel like your life is over the Lord is saying I am bringing you out of slavery and I am bringing you into a time and a season of fruitfulness the fruitfulness you've been crying for that is the fruitfulness I want to bring in your life so it may seemingly look and or it may be very uncomfortable for some time but understand where I'm taking you so for Ackermans however the Lord says I shall spare you he says it shall be spared and then he says Ackermans reflect me Ackermans reflect me setting my eyes on the children's section Ackermans when the Lord said that I, I saw that he was he wanted to redirect or to for them to rebrand or to re uh, to rethink their focus in terms of the clothes that they sell and he was giving them uh, new blueprints concerning children and concerning the the kind of clothes he wants them to sell for children because like i said god is so detailed and he's very very much going to be hands on and very much involved in everything that pertains to our lives there's nothing he's not going to touch in this season of of fullness because he wants to give us a taste of how life was supposed to be before the fall hallelujah so for those that think god doesn't care about certain things god cares he cares he's a father if you are a father and you have a teenage daughter and you see her she's leaving she's she tells you she's going to a party and you can see the type of clothes she's wearing are going to attract all the boys and might even cause some of them to spike her and to rape her you are going to tell you are not going out looking like that so what gives us this understanding or this idea that god doesn't care god cares more than you think god cares more than your biological or your physical parents he cares hallelujah Somebody saying Mike's Kitchen is in South Africa. So it, it was a franchise from South Africa. Then South Africans received that word. Hallelujah. The Lord continues to say, watch the Colosseum. Watch the Colosseum. He says, watch it. Watch what I shall do. Mark the end. What I shall do marks the end of the old and the beginning of the new. History. And then he says new history new era hallelujah so the lord is saying we're going to see something happen to the Colosseum. uh those of you that have watched gladiator you know the Colosseum. those of you that have done uh european history you know the Colosseum. so the lord is saying something very significant is going to happen concerning the Colosseum, and this will be marking a new history and a new era I've said this before that some of the things that have been recorded as history as the truth of history are not really true and in this season that we are in God is setting the record straight concerning what we have been told including in this nation what we believe to be our true history so God is going to be doing the checks and balances and he's going to be setting things right so that going into this new era or us having entered this new era we enter with a full understanding of where we truly come from so that we may make informed decisions about the present and the future hallelujah he goes on to say esther esther it's time hallelujah and then he says all Haman's of this hour shall be called sociopaths he says, all Haman's of this hour shall be called sociopaths. The Lord says, Esther, and when he said Esther is time, I saw that the Lord was talking to the body of Christ in its entirety to say that we are in a time where we have to be bold. We are in a time where we have to stand. You need to understand something. During the times of old, they didn't have what we have. They didn't have the governmental structure that we have today. It was different. It, they were kingdoms. So they had kings, they had princes, you know, they had advisors to the king and all of those things. So in our time, it's different. We have presidents, we have ministers, 
we have um, some places have still have chiefs that are not ceremonial that actually have a say we have all sorts of things basically we have politics uh, that are slightly different from what was then so if you look at the life of Daniel you look at the life of Joseph you look at the life of Esther they were very much instrumental they were very much used by God to bring about the right changes to the government of that time that was going to affect directly the lives of the people so for some of you who are Christians who feel like no I don't want to get involved when it comes to politics then my friend you are absconding from responsibility Mordecai even said it to Esther he said don't even get it twisted if you think for a second that you will be spared simply because you are in the palace you are awfully mistaken because that is not what is going to happen if your people perish you will also perish alongside those people why because God is watching you and God is not into waste he put you in the palace for a reason he put you in the palace so that he can use you as an instrument to save his people why because God is in the business of salvation that is what God is in the business of it doesn't matter how he uses you whether he uses your looks whether he uses your brains whether he uses your ability to pray it does not matter what quality or what gift he has given you whatever gift he has given you is channeled ultimately it is supposed to be channeled towards salvation towards helping in the saving of a people and right about now, we are in the same time. That's why the Lord says the Hamans. He didn't say Haman. Why? Back then, it was just the Jews that believed in God or that were recognized as the people of God. So it was just one spirit that had to enter one man who was called Haman. When the Lord says the Hamans of this hour, he's talking about the spirit that was operating in Haman. That spirit had one thing in mind, to annihilate the people that believed in the living God. And at that time, it was what? It was the Jews, because Jesus Christ had not yet come to die for all the children of God, which includes those that were called the Gentiles, that is us. So now because the children of God are all over the world. It is not just in Israel. They are all over the world. Those that have uh, recognized the living God as their God. They worship him and they believe in him and they follow his ways. So because of that, now we have many Hamans that Satan has stationed in different places. And now he has brought them together to consolidate power and say we must annihilate these people from all over the world which is where the globalist agenda comes from of depopulation of the world this is nothing new it's just that now it's at a higher scale than it was then but it is it is nothing new that's why we say that there is a saying that nothing is new under the sun so the same way Esther and the children of Israel and Mordecai had to be bold and courageous and do what God was requiring of them to do at that time to ensure that they are not taken out. They had to do their part. God was not just going to do everything himself. He said, I'll partner with men if men will partner with me. Why? Because I've given men dominion on planet and I don't have dominion on earth. I can influence them. I can give them my power. But I don't have the right to go and to assume a place on planet Earth as a spirit and actually do things myself, separate from the, 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 the collaboration with men. So there's a role that you need to play in the season. Gone are the days where you just sit in a little corner and say, well, others will do it, and I guess things will just be fine. Things will just work themselves out. Things will not just work themselves out. You have to play your role. And the biggest part of that role in our season is knowledge. You need to be knowledgeable of what is happening. 
you need to be knowledgeable of who is planning what and how so that you may make informed decisions so that you may not sign ignorantly the demise of yourself and your own when the king signed he signed from a place of ignorance you see, the spirit of Haman is very cunning and very deceptive. When he presents to you whatever it is that he wants to do, and he makes it seem like it's something that is going to benefit you, which is what has happened to a lot of leaders in this world. They have been deceived like Xerxes was deceived. They don't even know that they have signed for their people to be killed. Xerxes didn't know. That Haman was after the, the, the people that his own wife was coming from. He didn't know that he was signing for his own wife to be killed. Because he didn't, he didn't see the need to interrogate the fullness of what Haman was proposing. And that is our problem today. We don't interrogate anything. When we are given pills, we drink. This is what they do. We just believe. We drink. We don't read anything. We don't ask anything. When they tell you, take this injection, we just take. We don't ask anything. We just receive. Whatever we are told, we receive, we take. And because we had been programmed for handouts, the enemy knew what he was doing. When he programmed us for handouts, We've been programmed for handouts. You, you have neglected your own path, your own life. You have neglected your own path, your and then you wait again next year. You do the same thing again. No understanding whatsoever. If I was to ask you right now, Batswan, how many of you actually know and understand your constitution that governs your country? How many of you know what is in your constitution? How many of you know the rights you have and that which you don't have as a right. How many of you actually understand what democracy, this thing that we have adopted, that doesn't even exist. Let's just for a few minutes flatter ourselves and say democracy is actually something attainable and real. How many of you actually know how it was supposed to function in our country and whether it's still functioning like that? How many of us know those things? How many of us even know the amendments that have been made to the Constitution and how those amendments affect us today? How many of you know and understand the rights that you have even concerning your child at school and where those rights end and why they end at certain places? How many of you actually interrogate the, the, the curriculum the syllabus that is being given to children. How many of you have actually asked and wanted to engage and, and, and understand what inspired us as a nation? I'm not pointing fingers to anyone. In fact, I'm pointing them those fingers to us. I'm not pointing them to... Today, I'm not pointing to the rulers. I'm pointing to us. Because at the end of the day, it is our responsibility. Truth of the matter is for the longest time, we have absconded our responsibility even concerning our children. And the enemy saw that. And because he saw that, he took advantage of our negligence, of our lack of responsibility. Today, it's a common thing. And I continue with life. I get another baby. The only people who are actually parenting your child is what is the school. It's schooling them. 
Bego na la helante. Bego na le peer pressure. Da friends. Da schooling them. But when there is no role you are playing as a parent. None. Why? You are busy. Busy doing what? A hon. O godi klabu. O tete tete mo. Mo toropong le ba nana le ba sadi. No direction whatsoever. Some of you, you, you can't even remember the last time you saw your child. Not because you are busy with work and there's nothing you can do about it. But simply because we cannot do anything. You don't even know the curriculum. Is it even relevant today? What we are feeding our children in schools. Is it going to help them to be competitive at an international level? Or are we programming them to be laborers by that which they are excelling at? Because it doesn't even matter if you excel at it. It means that if the curriculum you've been given, it is the kind that programs you to just be an employee. Then even if you get A star, you are getting an A star to be a very a excellent laborer. Nothing beyond that. Because you cannot produce beyond what you know. It's not that your brain cannot accommodate the higher realities, the higher things, revelation that can be afforded or that is available, that can be explored by others or that is being explored by others that have been given something higher. That is programming them for leadership. So we need to ask ourselves some of these things. Because as the world as it is today is very competitive. So do you honestly believe that those that are competing with you, those that want to benefit from your resources year in, year out, will actually come up with a curriculum that will make you know or that will bring you to the level of the knowledge they have. We are joking. We are playing games. So obviously they are going to give you something that will not be problematic for them. That will serve them. They are going to make sure whatever they come up with, you can know as far as one plus one is equals to two. But I can't have you knowing that five plus five is equals to ten. It's common sense. You will know that when I come into your country and I extract your resources and I give you five percent of the profits of your own resources, you will know that this is not right. But if I've programmed you to believe that I'm always more powerful than you and I'm more sophisticated than you and you are actually, I'm doing you a favor when I come to extract your resources. And then I give you handouts. Change. From the resources I've, got, I've gotten from you. I'm called by God. I'm speaking the mind of God. God has a mandate in this season. You know what that mandate is? Is to flood the earth. Not the United States of America. Not Australia. Not Africa. Not Europe. The world. The fullness thereof. Fullness. Isn't Halele Had? Fullness of the earth with the knowledge of Him. What is that knowledge? The fullness of how this world is supposed to operate in such a manner that there is fair distribution of wealth for all mankind. So, unfortunately, that assignment comes with touching on all things. Searching out all things. Gone are the days where we are kept in the little corner of the church. Of religion. 
God is coming to open every door of power. Every single door to set things right. God is coming to open your eyes. He's coming to give you hunger for knowledge. Hunger. The hunger that had been taken away from you. You were left with nothing. Nothing else but social media. Nothing else but vanity. God is coming in this time to shake all of that nonsense out and to bring you back to order, to bring you back to purpose, assignment, being assignment focused, mission driven, having an understanding that you are here to perform something. You are here to leave a mark before you go back to heaven. You are here to ensure that your children, you leave them with everything they need. You have equipped them for their own assignments. And education is one of the most important things we need to give our children. Even if you leave your children without money, without a house, if you can make sure they get the right education, that is the equipping that they need for their assignment. And mark my words, I'm not saying it just anything. I'm saying proper education for what they've been wired to do by God. Then you are doing your assignment in this world. Then you are doing your assignment in this world. The other day I was so, I was so disturbed by something. When we were in Francis Town, uh, the lodge that we were at where we were uh, giving the word for entrepreneurs. When we went for the break and I found some, some, some people outside, the whole time they were just taking selfies, selfies, especially, it was shocking, I kid you not. This time around, it was not even women, it was men, literally taking selfies the whole entire time, selfies. And I realized that, you know, we underestimate the programming that is being done in this season. People don't even see what they have become. Men are no longer men. Women are no longer women. We have become something else that does not reflect the true picture of our true identity. And God is coming to shake all of that off in this season. Is coming to shake it off and to take us back to the mindset of destiny, the mindset of legacy, the mindset of continuity. When you understand these things, when you are legacy driven, you are continuity driven, there's no way you can abscond from your responsibilities as a parent. There's no way because these are the people that are going to pick up from where you left off and therefore you understand the importance of grafting them in from an early age into that which you are doing or that which you've been assigned as a clan or as a family by the Lord to continue. So as they are being given the knowledge or they're being equipped by God personally on what they shall be doing, they're also being equipped by you in terms of making them understand what has been done thus far so that when they pick up from where you left off, they know what has been and what is to become. That is continuity. But when Satan convinces you that your children are a distraction, that is the biggest deception and you have been robbed beyond anything else, my friend. So it is time to go back to truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But like I always say, when the Lord speaks, I'm not going to quench him. Listen, I'm not perfect. I've, 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 I have my own, you know, mistakes that I've made. He came for sinners. We need to understand that when some of these things, he's not here to judge us. So, that's why I get like you are 
kisuli do tsene mo tsadi ba ka nyane le nna ga ke setse ke nna ga tshike re because it is not me that is speaking it is the spirit of god i get to take notes for myself and i know what i need to improve on and because i've made up my mind that i want god to be able to purge me and make me perfect for his coming i'm not going to hide behind anything i fully expose myself to him and say lord show me what you want me to be working on because there's no one who's still breathing who's perfect in this world we are constantly being renewed we are constantly being purged and we are constantly being called to a higher place by the lord it is up to us whether we are going to receive the corrections of the lord and turn from our wicked ways or we are going to decide to ignore them and allow satan to tell us we are judged it is completely upon us to decide hallelujah so i'm going to just read some of the things that the lord had given me concerning this prophetic word what time is it? It's nine. Give me. Bazaar one. Hello, give me get tired. It's nine. Give me. Bazaar one. Hello, give me get tired. If there's something else you'd rather be doing at this point in time, kindly indicate. Uh, I know that we normally do it from seven to to nine, two hours. So normally, when I have to go beyond that, I kindly ask for your permission because I don't want to. Uh, hold you hostage with the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord continues and he says, listen, kings, listen, kings of this world. I have come. Be found in the place of my light. Be found in the place of my light. Pro and then he goes on to say, prosper, prosper, prosper. My little ones prosper in this season. He's going to be showing you how to do that. Hallelujah. He goes on to say on the 28th of September, he says a clear line between lies and truth. A clear line. The Lord spoke about separation in this season. So we are going to see a clear distinction between lies and the truth in all uh corners or in all fields from your personal life to your community to your nation to the world we are going to see a clear line because for the longest time things have been blurry and we haven't been able to discern what is true and what is not those that have not been able to discern by the way of the spirit so the lord says we have come into a season where he is going to be making it plain and clear for all to see those that are spiritual and those that are not spiritual what is truth and what is a lie that is why uh the lord has said before that i saw something one of you said that is why the lord said uh, in the season don't try to vindicate yourself allow god to vindicate you allow god to vindicate you so the lord is saying we have come now into that time if you've been falsely accused of something know that the season of truth is now here and truth is going to be laid bare by the lord himself the angels have been released i remember in 2020 there was a word that he gave and he spoke about files being retrieved and he said even shredded files this is how serious god is he said even shredded files i'm going to assemble them and bring those files to the forefront so nothing is lost and nothing in this season will remain hidden because god himself is bringing all things to the forefront to settle matters hallelujah he goes on to say cyclones cease cyclones cease and then he said cyclones of the enemy cease this was on the 2nd of september sorry they retrieved a word from the 2nd of november 2021 that had to do with cyclones that the lord had given because of what he said uh on the 28th of september so the lord there's a word i gave concerning cyclones is a very insightful word even concerning cycles of life and how cyclones 
also speak to the cycles of life and how God desires to bring you into the cycle of light or his cycle of life so that you don't experience the patterns that you had been seeing in your life were by reason of the cycle that you were under. So if you are under Satan's cycle, if you are someone that maybe every time you get, uh, what do you call it, engaged, the peasant dies, it means that the enemy has you in a cycle. And as long as you are in that cycle, that thing will continue to repeat itself over and over and over again until you leave that cycle and you enter God's cycle. And then you start to see a different pattern in your life. So this, when you come to the Lord, you need to understand that the way that he removes you from the cycle that you had been under for the longest time, that was causing only curses to come upon your life. When God gets ready to perform or to remove you from that cycle into his cycle, one of the pointers to that is that he will change your cycle or your circle of friends or your circle of people that you hang around. Why? Because he's breaking familiarity. It doesn't mean there are witches. Well, in some instances, maybe some of them were witches. In your, I don't know. But in majority of the time, it's not necessarily because there are bad people. It's simply because for God to be able to usher you into a new thing, he needs to kill familiarity. He needs to kill the things in your life that normally drive that cycle or that maintain that cycle. Because there are certain events and there are certain things that are said in your life that maintain a certain cycle. So when God gets ready to remove you from that cycle, the same way he did with Abraham, he said, leave your father's house and go to a place I will show you. What was God doing? He was breaking the cycle of life that Abraham had been living under. He was saying to him, if I am to bring you into my cycle, that will result in you becoming Abraham. Because in this particular cycle, you are Abraham. And as long as you stay with the people that call you Abram, you will not become the father of nations. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. But I'm going to take you to a different place. So that when I give you a new name, the people in that place may be able to assume or they may be able to flow with the new that I'm doing in your life because they are not familiar with you. So some of us stand in our own progress or we stand in our own way of entering the, the new cycle of God or entering the cycle of blessing. I break this in the name of Jesus, but nothing is changing. Why? You are failing to leave your father's house. Certain things will only be broken by obedience, beloveds. I'll say that again. Certain things will only be broken out of your life by obedience. You, are, you have tried a lot of things. Accept obedience. Accept for obedience. You have tried oil, you have tried water, you have tried salt, you have been laid hands on, you have fallen, you have vomited, every bad. The one thing that is left is obedience. You can imagine if Abraham, God told him, leave your father's house, he decides, I'm going to anoint myself and remain in my father's house and I shall become the father of nations. Where? Obedience. Obedience is key, beloveds. I'm not rubbishing anything. All these other mediums, we see them in the Bible. God has used them. But you need to understand that nothing overrides obedience. Even if I was to pray for you until I turn blue, if you don't obey God, nothing will change in your life. So obedience is always key to move from one cycle of life into the cycle that God has in store for you at that point in time. That is when you will start to see a shift. When Abram left his father's house, that's when God now started to take him to the places where his treasure was waiting for him, where his inheritance 
was waiting for him. His inheritance was not going to come to him at his father's house. His inheritance didn't have legs. But he had legs to go to where the inheritance is and get what belongs to him. And along the way, God knew the place where he would turn his name from Abram to Abraham. And that marked the blessing now, the, the changing of his name was a marker that now you have entered the new cycle. And because you have entered my cycle now, you are now going to become the father of many nations. No longer will you be the Abram that they knew who was barren. Some of you, you are known for certain things that are not even glorious. The Lord is saying, when you follow me, when you follow every instruction I'm giving you, the cycle I'm, I'm getting you into or the cycle I'm introducing you into is going to give you a new identity. They will start to identify you with a new thing. He was known as the Baron Abraham. And now we know him as the father of many nations. So God says, if you desire that for yourself, cycles are changing, beloveds. We're in a time of Kairos. You will never have this opportunity like you have it now. So you need to grab it with everything that you have and pray for God to give you courage to take that step of faith. That step of radical faith where you yourself, you say today, if it's not God who said it, then I'm definitely crazy. I certify myself crazy. That is what some of the things that God will instruct you to do will make you feel like. You feel like you are going crazy, literally. You can imagine. The fullness of the picture. <laughs> Go to a place I will show you. So imagine as the man of the house, you are supposed to have answers all the time. You are the baba of the house. These are the things that qualify you for madness in the eyes of the people. So if you are not ready to be misunderstood, then you are not ready for a new cycle of life. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I don't want to sugarcoat anything because I want to help you to know how these things come about. To know that the people that you see succeeding in their path with the Lord understand how they go to where they got. Understand the practicality of things. So the instruction part is very, very vital. That is why when God, you know, differentiates between those that are going to hell and those that are going to heaven, he says we only have two sons of obedience and sons of disobedience. Two. So instruction is key in this time. He goes on to say, They that trust in the Lord shall renew their strength. They that trust in the Lord. All you need to do in this season is trust God. And you are going to see yourself bounce back like never before. Rejuvenated, refreshed like never before. It doesn't matter what you've gone through in your journey. It doesn't matter who has given up on you, who has said you will never bounce back. Listen. The Lord says, when you trust me, when you abide in me, when you give it all in my hands and you understand you have the audience of one, me, when you know that you have repented before me and you have asked for forgiveness and you are now ready to walk the straight and narrow, he says, when you trust me, I am going to renew your strength in this season for you to start a new life. Because you came at the right time 
Tell those that have backslidden. The, the right time is now to go back. The right time is now to go back to God. Because we are in a season of Kairos. God is saying, I have a completely new life ready for you to assume. Don't, don't allow the enemy to talk you down, to discourage you, to say, Well, nah. When I hope I did, Limudimo Mobalit, Harona Sepekawe, don't listen to that. It's a lie from the pit of hell. God is calling you to get it right this time. He's calling you back to himself. He's reconciling you back to himself. That's the whole reason why Jesus Christ died. He died for your blunders. He died for your mistakes. He died for your sins so that you can come back and assume holiness once again and live the life that God has written of you, not a counterfeit life, the life that God has written of you, the life of blessing, the life of the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. So that even whatever problems you encounter, whatever situations you encounter, whatever challenges, there are challenges within the parameters of what? Of the cycle of God that he has in store for you. The kind that edifies and helps you to grow and be purged into a pure bride. So God says it's time. Strength is available. Strength is there for those that will come. And lay their lives before the Father. He goes on to say, Kereke, Kereke, Ialuka, Kereke, Ialuka, Kimafuqua Moren, Arwan Lukisa, Mokereke, Kimafuqua Amante, Ilurur. He goes on to say, Amplified is my voice, my voice, my voice, signs of a new dawn, signs of a new dawn. On the second of on the 2nd of October 2022 he said draw and then he said intro what you are about to experience is an intro it is not the fullness but an intro to my blessing an intro the Lord is saying what he's about to do in this season as much as it's going to blow your mind he says understand it is not even the fullness of what I have for you but simply an introduction hallelujah so if i were you i would position myself right with the lord if i were you i would put away childish things knowing that it's about to go down in the kingdom of light therefore i need to pose don't worry about those that have been there for the longest time and you know maybe you feel like because you just came back from the world then god doesn't have anything for you Believe me, any time you enter, if the, there are those that were cooking. And this is the thing we need to understand. If you don't have your heart right, you are going to be offended in this season. Because God will bless someone who just came into the kingdom the same way he's blessing you. So if your heart is not right, if you feel like they shouldn't get blessed, they should go through what you went through as well while you were in the kingdom so that they can also qualify. God said none of you qualifies anyway. None of you qualifies. So just because you are the one who cooked doesn't mean that you qualify because you cooked. Then you are now slipping to what? To works. You are slipping into a slope of what? Self-righteousness. Oh, I cooked. So what do you say? Because you cooked, you are nullifying what Jesus did on the cross for you. Because you are saying, you are simply saying, your cooking is enough to erase your sins. Is enough to advocate for you before God. That is what you are saying. So the Lord says, have my heart. Be in right standing with me. Have a pure heart. Adopt my heart so that you may come into higher realities of what I do. Don't be offended when I bless people who just came into the kingdom. Because there is a portion for every single one of you. Just because they are getting blessed, it's not like God is taking from some of your blessings. God gives you what's for you and what has always been for you. And whatever he's giving to them, it what always belongs to them. So it's not even like it was going to come to you. 
it's what belongs to them still so the lord says let us watch the state of our hearts also in this season as the prodigals come back to the kingdom of light hallelujah he goes on to say pot elizabeth pot elizabeth and then he said uh before that he's yes uh, they retrieved a word that he had given uh, early this year concerning Port Elizabeth, where he said, I will birth a mine, a mine. He said a tin mine. Uh, so the Lord said there's going to be discovery of tin uh, in Port Elizabeth. And I stand to be corrected, but I think he also spoke of gold. There seems to be a lot of gold in Southern Africa that is going to be discovered in this time. So let us be... Uh, in the lookout for that as well and then he goes on to say doors are opening doors are opening listen doors are opening in this season hear me doors are opening in this season i'm gonna say that again doors are opening in this season so make sure that you are listening to god because the doors that he's opening may not necessarily be the doors that you are waiting for to open in other words, don't allow your doors to be opening elsewhere while you are standing somewhere else waiting for doors to open. Discern by the Spirit where your doors are opening so that you may be standing at the right place at the right time to be able to be ushered in to what God wants to do in your life in this season. He continues to say, come up higher, my people come up higher for crystal clear vision come up higher the lord is saying for you to see clearly what he's doing come up higher remember that by the throne between what is supposedly the floor of god's throne which happens to be the ceiling of the angels or the cherubs the lord the bible has clearly stated in ezekiel 1 that it is crystal clear so god is saying and i've, I've given a teaching concerning uh, the cherubs and the different heads that they have and what they symbolize in terms of the character that we're supposed to have as believers for us to be able to come up to that place or to come up to the throne of god we need to have that kind of sight that also brings about transparency that also brings about purity of heart which can only be given by Holy Spirit. So when he says come up higher, he's simply saying, get closer to my spirit like never before. You and Holy Spirit become one. Why? Because he is the spirit of holiness. And therefore, when you allow him to saturate you, you become holy yourself. And only holy beings, only holy beings can come to the throne of God or can come close to the crystal, the firmament, that is the floor of God's throne. And when you are there, because it is transparent, that is where you start to mirror him. That is where you start to get a clear vision of what the heart of the Father. Because the closer you get to the throne, for you to say that you have seen the heart of the Father, the heart of the Father simply means His desires, His plans for your life, because they are written in His heart. In Ephesians chapter 1, we, it talks about, Paul talks about the fact that the Father of glory, the one that has written His will concerning your life, this will that Paul is talking about, the hope of His calling for you is written in His heart. And for you to be able to see it, because as much as it is written, when you get to see it, it comes in the form of vision. That means it comes in the form of images, even though it is written. That is why when you read the written word, when you read it by the Spirit of God, what are you provoking? You are provoking vision. And the vision of that which is written comes in a pictorial form or comes in the form of images. So God is saying, when I say come up higher, crystal clear, the more you pray by the Spirit, the more you read the Word of God that is in line with His Word for the hour, 
the higher you are going in the spirit realm, the purer you are getting, the holier you are getting. The more you follow the instructions of the Lord, the holier you are getting. That means that automatically, because holiness goes hand in hand with light. And when I say light, I mean both illumination and also being light according to weight. So the lighter you get, the higher you go. And the higher you go, the closer you get to the throne of God. And the lighter you get, the more you get what? Vision or clear vision. So that means that this light I'm talking about, it is what? It is double. It has double meaning. So as you get lighter in weight, because you have assumed or you are being filled with the spirit of God. One of the ways you can know if you are filled with the Spirit of God or the Spirit that is not of God is how you feel. Satan, how does it Satan? You just feel tired. You just feel weighed down. There is a demonic oppression that is just around you that you need to get rid of. So when you get into praise and worship, when you get into the word, when you get into prayer, what are you doing? You are breaking off every form of heaviness that is trying to weigh you down so that you don't go up higher and get vision of what is written of you in the Father's heart. The vision concerning your life, the vision concerning this particular hour that we are in and what God has in store for you so that you may make informed decisions for your life. That is what he's saying here. Hallelujah. I hope it is clear how we go high and the reason for going high. If you didn't hear it, go back to this portion again and go through it until you get it. He goes on to say, Pathfinder, hearken to my voice, navigate the storm. To others, it is a storm. To you, those found in me, it is peace, calmness, and rest. Only from my, pe only from my peace can you navigate the storm and stir it in the right direction. Use it to accumulate wealth. This is a very, very packed, potent word. I'll read it for you again. He says, Pathfinder, hearken to my voice. Navigate the storm. To others, it is a storm. To you, to those found in me, it's calmness, it's peace, calmness and rest only those only from my peace can you navigate the storm and stir it in the right direction use it to accumulate wealth from what i just spoke about concerning the four heads of the cherubs and how they're supposed to reflect the fullness of our being in such a manner that we can be able to be regarded as in perfect or synchronization with heaven or in perfect standing with heaven or in having the likeness of God. Hallelujah. So here you can see that this is speaking to the side of us that uh, is reflected by the image of the eagle. Because we know that eagles are known for navigating storms. We know that eagles are known for their ability to use storms to elevate them to higher places god is saying we're in a season where the world is going through shakings there is a storm at this point in time the world is in a whirlwind the world is going is in a tornado and this tornado is taking everything that is on its path including wealth because those of you that have seen a tornado before you know that everywhere it goes, it soups. It doesn't care whether it's it's your, whatever that is in your house. It doesn't choose to say, oh, I can't take your necklace, your diamond necklace. I can't take your money. I can't take this, this expensive chair. It takes everything on its path. And if you are like an eagle, an eagle uses the same storm that is destruction to others, the same storm that is taking from others, the eagle is able to use the same storm to take it to higher places. So which means if you 
have the mindset of God. The eagle side of you comes out when whatever, and the thing you need to understand is that whatever is happening at the time, there is the side of God that you carry that is meant to navigate whatever you are going through. So storms are navigated by the eagle. Storms are meant to take you higher in life. I'll say that again. Storms are meant to take you higher in life. And we are going through a global storm. This storm is meant to take you higher. You cannot remain in the same place. If you truly carry God in you, you will not remain in the same place. When you carry God, when storms come, you start to salivate. You start to feel excited. You get excited because you know and you understand, this is my season of elevation. This storm, this global storm is an opportunity for you to reach heights you could have never dreamt of in your life. The question is, are you going to be found outside the storm? Are you going to be one of the things that are going to be swept away by the storm? Or are you going to be one of those that are going to tame the storm and decide how to navigate that storm in such a manner that it is going to benefit you? So you have the power. There is nothing of this world that you have not been programmed to take. There is nothing in this world that God did not give you dominion over. That means even the storms, you have dominion over them. Jesus Christ showed this to us when he spoke to the storm and he said, be still. And the storm was still. What was he trying to show us? He was trying to remind us of who we are. That this is something you have power over. You have power over the elements of the air. If Satan can manipulate the weather, what more of a child of God who is supposed to be higher than him? Satan is supposed to be under your feet. If he can manipulate the weather, if God can say, Satan, you no longer have the circles that have been caused by the enemy seas. It means that the enemy can control weather patterns. And if the enemy can do it, you can do something beyond what he can do. Because of your nature. Because of your standpoint. You are above him. You are in Christ. Automatically you are above him. So as the storms come, the economical storms, as they come, whatever shakings are happening in this season, no matter what they look like, child of God, this is your opportunity to go high. This is your opportunity to be elevated. Now, I'm not one of those who just say receive, you know, receive growth, receive the wealth, receive the elevation. How? That is the question you need to be asking yourself. How? The practical side. How do I do that? How do I do that? In the past videos, we have shared on some of these things. But during these three days, we are going to be touching fully. We are going to be laying things bare. The Lord told me, don't assume they know certain things. So there are certain things I've always assumed that people just automatically know. The Lord said, don't assume that. So we're going to be dealing with things practically. Because God has given you so much that if we had not been robbed of critical thinking, majority of you would already be on it right about now. You would be working and preparing on certain things that are going to be needed in these storms. Because storms, they call for what? They, they cause certain things. To be in demand because when a storm comes what it does is that it soups things from one area and concentrates them in one area so it causes lack in one area and then it causes abundance in another area so when you have the eyes of an eagle because remember storms are what they are navigated by eagles so it's not just the ability of the the eagle to be able to navigate the storm and soar higher and higher. What enabled the eagle to even think that way was its vision. 
it was able to see beyond what it, the appearance of the storm. It was able to pierce through and see what it was like in the middle of the storm. Because those of you that know a cyclone or that know a tornado, you know that it is in a circular motion. So there's a lot of havoc. There's a lot of chaos that is happening on the outside of that storm. But in the middle where no one can see is absolute calmness. Absolute calmness. And that's what the eagle saw. So when everybody else was running away from the storm, the eagle was going towards the storm because it saw something that nobody else saw. I'm talking to someone. It saw something that nobody else saw. Beyond the covering or beyond the appearance of the storm, there is calmness in the middle of the storm. There is peace. I remember one time I was in prayer and the Lord just had me pressing and pressing and pressing for hours. And then at one point, it just happened so suddenly. I was taken into this place. And he made me understand that it was similar to the way that he visited Moses in the mount, at the mountain. There was this dark, terrible, that is the only word I can use, terrible cloud. And it wasn't just still. It was like a storm. And there were thunders and lightnings that were like guarding that cloud to make sure that nothing enters or it terrifies you. So that you don't even have any thoughts of coming any closer. The children of Israel would be terrified when God would descend on the mountain. They would be terrified. They would tell Moses, you go and talk to him. We don't want to go. We don't want to talk to him. It was terrible. So God has this tendency of hiding himself in storms. I'm going to say that again. God has a tendency. I'm just going to camp here, beloved. Or some other time has a tendency of hiding himself inside. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to hear this. God has a way of hiding himself in storms remember what i said about this season the lord is behind the shaking why is he behind the shaking he is precisely answering your prayers for you to assume your rightful place in this world god is going to cause a shaking and this shaking is going to cause those that don't know him to run away from the storm but those that know him will not run away and they will be able to assume their places why because they are familiar with their god they know him they understand him even when he comes as terrible even when he has enveloped himself when he has clothed himself with the garment of a storm they can still be able to identify him they are still able to locate him they are still able to detect him the lord even spoke about the fact that as he gets ready to work on the church to bring the church back to order in this season he said many will say the church is a mess but remember my children that i am working things out it is i the lord that is bringing things back to order. It may look messy for a little bit, but remember that it is I. Are you able to discern me? Do you have my spirit? Do you have a relationship with my spirit that you may be able to see that even though I lost this job, even though I got re retrenched, God is in the storm. And when I come closer, and when I start to seek him more and more, and I embrace the storm, and I don't run away from it, I embrace it and I find out what exactly is he doing. 
There lies my place of rest, my place of calmness, my place of peace, right in the middle of that storm. That is why the Lord said, no thief in this season will access his treasure. Why? His treasure is surrounded by fire. It's surrounded by holy fire. You won't even have to be scared and say, hey, Mudim, can I, you know, how these people are? They, they always know how to just hijack things from us. And before we know it, they're running with it. God is not like men. They, have, they might have been able to swingle you out of whatever it is that you were trying to do for yourself. But what is of the Lord? When God determines to do things in a certain way, no one can stop it. So you won't even have to worry about trying to guard your things. There's no guarding of anything. The only thing you need to be doing is setting yourself ablaze with holy fire. The fire that God wants to imbue you with, the fire he wants to baptize you with, is the same temperature as the fire that is protecting the treasure. I don't know if you hear me, beloved. He knows the temperature of the fire that surrounds the treasure. So the same fire is the same temperature that he wants to set you ablaze with. So that what others feel like is too hot for them to handle. You just enter because you are used to that kind of heat. That's your type of heat. You understand it, you live with it. In fact, it, you are so used to it that for you it is cool. Because it's your temperature, it's your normal room temperature. You don't understand it. When the three Hebrew boys went into that furnace, <laughs> those boys were used to that temperature. So when that king thought, oh, I'm going to make, a, a, I'm going to, to set an example with these boys. One thing he didn't know and one thing he didn't understand. These were not ordinary boys. These were boys that had laid their lives down and decided to follow God. These boys, they gave up everything to ensure that they got this fire. The fire that they had, their ability to say, King, even if he doesn't deliver us, we will still stand. We will not bow to your God. We will not worship any other God other than our God. So even if you put us into this furnace and we die, we burn in there, so be it. But we have made up our mind to follow the living God. What had them have that kind of courage? Remember that these boys, when they went to Babylon, everybody else was feasting. They never eat the bait. We just eat anything, we go anywhere. We are like the rest of the world. So you go with the city life. These boys didn't do that. When everybody else was eating pork and drinking wine and, and having all these things, they decided to keep themselves pure. And when the day came, because it is your ability to discipline yourself, your ability to allow Holy Spirit to give you your unique diet, your unique walk, to pave your way, to make you understand this is what you eat, this is what you wear, this is how you speak, this is where you go, this is where you don't go to these places. Yes, you may be in the city, but you can't do that. You can't be part of this. You can't be part of that. But this is what I expect you to be doing. When everybody else is always out, doing nothing, this is what you need to be doing. I'm giving you some work, research on this and this and that. So that when you are presented before kings, you are ready. You have something to deliver. Hallelujah. So God is saying in this season, I desire 
to prepare you. I desire to prepare you for elevation. I desire to prepare you for promotion. That which others will not be able to do. That which others will not be able to pull off. The kind of fire that no one else... Do you know that positions of power are positions of fire? Those seats are very hot. As desirable as they look from afar. They are very hot seats. The higher you go, the hotter it gets. So if you aspire for certain places, for certain positions of influence, of power, know that they come with fire. And if you don't have any power packed in the inside of you, you are in trouble. You will not survive those places. Because that fire, it means that everyone has an opinion. There are tests that are coming from all directions. You are expected to deliver all the time. The one time you don't deliver, everyone is on your case. You are all over papers. Why do you think the minute someone assumes the position of being a president, because these are not small positions. They are hot. They are they have serious heat. You aspire to be a CEO. And maybe God has promised you that you'll be a CEO in that company. But you are not preparing for that position. You just want it. And you come with no fire in the inside of you. They are going to chew you and spit you out. Because the enemy is always ready. Every time you assume your place, he's always positioned himself to make you come out. To make you fall from your place of grace. And the only time he succeeds is when you don't have any fire packed in the inside of you. To match or to outdo the, power, the fire that is coming from outside. That is why he said that they may be baptized in the Holy Spirit and in holy fire. Fire is meant to keep you. In the places of blessing that God has called you to. Fire is meant to help you to be elevated to the places that God desires to take you. It is the amount of fire you can take that will determine how high you can go. Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying, I desire to make you a storm rider. I desire to make you a storm rider and the only way you can do that is when you are filled with my spirit of holiness and my holy fire and in this season god is pouring out holy fire he's baptizing in the holy fire anew even those of you if you've been out completely out this is the right time to be imbued with new holy fire to set you ablaze anew. And nothing that God has in store for you will the enemy be able to swingle out of your hands because you will be fired up. You will be courageous enough to say, not this time, devil. I am getting what is mine and there's nothing that you can push or that you can bring my way that is going to make me turn away from my blessings. I am receiving what is mine. I am coming after what is mine. And I'm not going to apologize for it. I am coming for all of it. You cannot be violent with demons, principalities and powers if you don't have fire. You cannot even locate them if you don't have Holy Spirit. Because we fight not against flesh and blood. So you need both Holy Spirit and Holy Fire to be able to win this battle and to be able to receive your portion of the wealth that God is bestowing upon his children in this season. Hallelujah. On the 5th of November, that is the meeting that we're going to be having on Saturday. We are going to be taking the second session because we're going to have two sessions on that day. The first session is in the morning from 10 o'clock to 2 p.m. 
and then the second session is from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock or 10 p.m. So the second segment, the first segment is going to be purely teaching from my side as per inspired by the Lord on things that are relevant to our time and what is happening in our time. Also to equip you to understand what God would have you do, what gap God would have you breach in this season that will make you a solution to your time, your generation, and the people maybe in your community or even the whole country or internationally. It depends on whatever your assignment is from the Lord. It's meant to equip you for such a time as this to be hands-on and to also understand, to have a better appreciation of what is happening and what God is doing. So it is going to be very, very insightful and I pray that the time will be enough. So if you are going to be attending that uh, session, make sure that you bring your notepad and you bring your pen because there will be a lot for you to take down for yourself. The second uh, session that is in the evening is going to be for questions. So those questions that you may have, if you have those questions now, make sure that you send them to the number that has been provided on this page so that we may gather these questions and be able to analyze them and see which questions uh, are, have a common uh, denominator, which questions can be looped together as one, and we can be able to answer as many of your questions as possible. But do make sure that your questions are in line. Remember, we are equipping the soldiers of Christ in this season. We are equipping disciples of Christ in this season. The people that want to know their God because they don't want a situation where they just receive blessings once in a while. They want to walk in the fullness of the 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 fullness of what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a follower of Christ. And most importantly, they want to be a solution in this time where we desperately need as many as possible, as many believers as possible to be in right standing with the Lord and having taken their place on the battle array. Hallelujah. So if you have questions, remember, the questions will be for Saturday evening session. Do send them in now so that we may be able to work on those questions and see how we can arrange them so that we may fully utilize that time to answer as many of your questions as possible and to give you as efficient as possible answers inspired by the Holy Spirit. So I believe this brings us to the end of today's word. I shared as per led by the Holy Spirit. I do hope that you have learned some things and I do hope that you are going to be meditating on certain scriptures that are in line with the things that were discussed today so that you may walk into the fullness of what God is doing in this time with a clear sight and a clear understanding of what is happening. So for those of you that would like to help and support the meeting that we're having, it's a three-day meeting. We have a very small group of individuals that are spearheading that so they need as much help as possible. However way you can help, do contact the ministry line to express whatever support you would like to express towards this meeting. God bless you and God keep you in this time. We'll meet again on Monday to finish the seven spirits of God that correspond with the seven spirits of uh, the system or the seven systems of this world. I do believe that we are left with government and um what is the other one we're left with i completely forgot um I, I i think the only one i can remember is government we've touched on education we've touched on uh religion we've touched on entertainment yes we are left with government and media we are left with government and media very important uh these two and then we are going to conclude the whole series uh, with a word the Lord gave me that pretty much gives an understanding 
of this teaching in a very beautiful, beautiful manner in Isaiah. So that is how we are going to conclude our series of the seven mountains. Like I said, the Lord desires for these things to be put as booklets uh, because we don't know what is going to happen. Plus, as in, in a form of a book, I, I'll be able to expand without being limited by time, uh, which is a factor when it comes to sharing online. So uh, do pray for us that we'll be able to have that time where we can be able to now uh, convert the book, the word from audio to booklets, and we can be able to distribute those for you so that at all, at all times you can be able to have access to the word and it will help you to navigate your way in these very, very crucial times that we find ourselves in. God bless you and God keep you. Have a wonderful weekend. Spend time with God. Spend time with God and he will surely bring you closer and give you clear sight and clear vision for this hour. Have a good night.